Yo. Let's go! What? Free movement! Free movement is coming to RPG in a box, and quickly. Jumping, and a ton of features that you would expect to see with free movement to make the implementation of free movement a true quality of life and comprehensive system to be used in your project. RPG in a box has been getting a crap load of updates lately. Justin has been working nonstop to add feature after feature after feature and is easily the most remarkable and ambitious solo RPG making dev I have seen yet. We're making huge strides here, fellows. I know free movement was requested quite a lot lot from people who didn't want to deal with navigation lines for this engine, but I really think that this is going to be the feature that blows it wide open. To be completely honest with you, there have been a ton of change logs and new release notes for the versions that have been getting released and the updates to the engine, and I have not had the time to cover them all. If I did have the time, I would have completely ran out of time just trying to read all of the different updates as they were coming out because there have just been a ton of them. I'm starting to think Justin's not a real person, but more of an idea created by a team of developers. Justin is like the Batman, just an idea that must exist, a concept so that it strikes fear in the hearts of uh, pe uh, uh, people who don't want to develop their own game. Is that is that the antithesis to the game dev? Is that the, is that the villain? Who's the villain? I'm going to read some of these off because there's just no time to go through all of them. But for version 1.0.7 released on April 2nd, the base implementation was added with the new free movement system enabled per map for map properties. Most gameplay would not work yet at this point. It's a use at your own risk feature. Then the added character collides trigger event for object scripts to the entity properties tab in the map editor for both grid based and free movement. Character collides being a very important thing for a condition. So in this engine, trigger event. When your character collides with this event, now things will happen, as opposed to you having to walk up to the event and hit a button to interact with it. Added pitch control camera setting, as well as focal offset and locked axes camera settings to the game configuration dialogues. That allows the player to control the pitch with min-max settings. Very nice. You can vertically offset the camera's focal point in third-person views. This has a lot of use cases. And you can lock the X, Y, and or Z axes, like locking the Y axis for a side-scroller effect that's a beautiful example, and this is extremely great for this engine. Just bumped my coffee. I didn't spill it. We're good. We're still, we're still good, boys and, and girls and other royalty. Damn it. <laughs> Added jump is an option to the list of predefined animation names when defining a character animation in the voxel editor. Predefined animation names are very important because the engine will automatically apply the animation that you assign to that predefinition once a specific condition is met, in this case, when your character jumps. It's really nice to see the jump animation being used in these RPG engines as jump becomes more of a feature that many game developers want to have in their projects. Added a debug console command for adjusting the player's jump height in free movement maps. So, for example, jump X, where X is from 0 to 10. That's right, you can adjust the height of your character's jump in RPG in a box. Added spotlights. Spotlight. Spotlight is a light source option to the voxel editor with initial settings for range in voxels and angle of the spotlight. Added hostility behavior setting for NPCs to determine how they behave when attackable. Uh, if they're always hostile, hostile if attacked or never hostile. Those, those are so nice. Being able to have a set of options for your NPC if they are attackable means you can have all kinds of different enemies now and just different NPCs that might react in different ways. You can start actually trying to build your own Skyrim in RPG in a box. I told you made Minecraft in RPG in a box. You know what? I want to see somebody make Skyrim in RPG in a box. Maybe, maybe that's a job. Maybe that's a job for me. We have just a ton of other things that were added here just in the April 2nd. And then there are just are so, so, so many bug fixes. And this is really, really great. There were a lot of bug fixes that I'm sure a ton of people weren't even aware of there being bugs because of the niche sort of use cases. But seeing all of these issues fixed, that's great. However, the fun doesn't stop there. Just four days later, we have a new set of features and changes and even more bug fixes, just proving that Justin is hard at work on this engine all the time, earning 
that pay. Uh, for the documentation, it's really nice to see that uh, there's an initial version of a 2D games tutorial that walks through setting up a 2D project, similar to the Kenny Tiny Dungeon template. So if you want to use RPG in a box, but you want to use it for a 2D project, uh, you can actually jump in and just get right to the 2D games tutorial. There's also an initial version of a built-in doc for free movement with details about current functionality issues and planned features. And this is important too, if you'd like to see where the free movement is kind of headed. I think we all know where it's headed, especially based on that video that I just showed you, which was posted a day ago versus this information, which was posted many days ago. Uh, but it's looking fire. It is looking great. Just to read the 4.6 release notes really quick, just some of them, new features and changes added the ability to modify the hostility setting of an NPC via a script. And this is very good so that you can have your own sort of feature like in Elden Ring, when I go and I attack an NPC, now they're going to be hostile towards me. They might run at me and attack me, but they've got a quest line and I can't finish their quest line because they're angry at me. So there's a point in Elden Ring where you can go take a sort of holy bath and cleanse yourself of all of your sins. And that actually causes everyone to forgive you. And so if you go back to that NPC you attacked previously, they won't attack you now. You've been absolved of your sins. It's a, it's a very strange mechanic, but it makes sense in a lot of other ways too. So this is really cool to have the same features that were implemented as script functions so that you can manipulate this data in runtime while your game is actually going on. It just gives you so much more control over the universe that you're building. Dang it, I gotta move my coffee. Added ability to call global functions from the in-game debug console, such as those defined in the game configuration dialog. That's a big deal. That might cause, that, that, might, that might really change up how you perceive your game. Going in and just changing game configuration dialog settings while you are test playing your game. That could be very, very handy. Uh, added ability to retrieve or modify a specific position of a string by numeric index. This is going to be really useful for advanced uh, script users. I know that anytime developers add the advanced string functionality in their engines, it's always highly appreciated by those people who want control over string variables. And there are a ton of use cases for this sort of thing too. If you're interested in letting your player name their character and have other characters reference your character by name, maybe there are certain symbols you don't want them to be able to use when they're making their name. You could take those out. You could find them in the string. You could extract them. There are just a lot of things that you could do. And then just in those four days, Justin also updated the NPC behavior built in docs to include info about the hostility setting. So you get that information in the engine and also updated the move character and scripting reference built in docs to include info about the optional pause parameter. So that's all the time that I can devote to this right now. Uh, just know, this thing is incredible. It is one of the engines that I highly, highly recommend to people who want to make their own RPG. It gets a little bit of flack because of visual style being voxels, but those people are not taking the time to look into what the engine can do. They're just looking at like initial screenshots of things that are made in voxels. If you join the Discord, which is always linked in the description below every single video, you will see a ton of stuff in the showcase channel. And there are people making beautiful voxel models and using the marching cubes function, which is a mathematical sort of algorithm that is used in that 3D space where voxels are concerned to kind of shape voxels dynamically in such a way that they're not always cubes. That's something that is beyond my intelligence to explain accurately to you. You have to see it to understand it, I think. So join the RPG in a Box Discord. Tell them that Ash sent you. I will wave hi to you when you arrive. And uh, stay tuned for much, much more RPG in a Box coverage. I'm always here, willing and ready to play your RPG in a Box games, cover engine updates when I can keep up, and just in general later, hopefully be able to provide comprehensive tutorials as I go through and finish making my own project, Ash and Anil. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.